In this video, we're going to talk about a very important property used in algebra called the distributive property. And to give us an idea about what the distributive property is, I am going to tell a little story about shopping. If you watched my last video on combining like terms, I use fruit to talk about um, terms. And I'm going to go ahead and continue with that as a theme. If not, what we did is we said, let's say that P equals the cost of one peach. So in this little picture here, let's say I'm at the store, uh, my wife sent me to the store, cost of one peach, and I am to buy three peaches for a recipe. So what would be the cost of these three peaches if the cost of one peach is P dollars, we'll say, or P cents, let's say cents, P cents. Well, the cost of these three peaches would be three times P, or three times the cost of one peach. Now let's say for the same recipe, I am to purchase four lemons. So let's go ahead and let's let L equal the cost of one lemon. So how much would these four lemons cost? That would be four times the cost of one lemon. So I've got three peaches and four lemons, and so the total cost of all this fruit would be attained by adding these two terms together. The cost of the peaches plus the cost of the lemons. Okay, so that would be an expression for the cost of all, the, all this fruit. So now let's say uh, my wife calls me on the phone and says, you know what, we're going to have so many people over, I think we should double this recipe. So I need you to buy twice as much of the peaches and twice as much lemons. Well, twice means we're going to multiply it by two. So in other words, I need to take this entire cost right here, this entire thing, and multiply it by two. Well, it's pretty easy to see then that if I am going to double my recipe instead of three peaches, I am going to need six times the cost of each piece, peach would be my uh, total cost. And if I had four lemons for one uh, batch of my recipe, then I'm going to have to buy eight lemons. So the cost is going to be eight times the cost of one lemon. Now what I want you to see here is that when I took this entire expression, this 3p plus 4l, these two terms, and I doubled it, essentially what I did was I took each term and multiplied it by two. I took 2 times my 3 to get 6 times the cost of 1 peach, and also 2 times my 4 to get 8 times the cost of each lemon. So this is the distributive property. This is how you simplify something with parentheses. Um, so let me write down the official distributive property here, which says, let me put it... Um, We'll put it right here. It says A times the quantity B plus C equals A times B plus A times C. And if you look and you think about distributing, this A that's outside is times everything in this parentheses. So you're going to take A times B plus A times C. C, and that's how we get this over here. And that's essentially, in this example, what we showed by doubling the recipe. We double each item that is in the recipe. Okay, now let's say that, um, let's say we have, let's take away the peaches and stuff, and just look at some examples of using the distributive property. Let's say we're told to simplify simplify the expression 3 times 2x plus 5. And we're going to use the distributive property to do that. But before we do that, I want to bring to your attention the fact that some of you are going to look at this and you're going to say, oh, I need to do what's in the parentheses first, order of operations. It wouldn't hurt to write down the order of operations. Order of operations. First thing, I'll just kind of abbreviate here to, for time's sake. 
The first thing you do is any grouping symbols, which most of the time means parentheses. Do what's inside the parentheses first. Second thing is exponents. The third thing is any multiplication and division, and you do that left to right. And then lastly, you're going to do addition and subtraction, and you're also going to do that left to right. So grouping symbols, what I'm supposed to do first. If I have more than one thing to do, I'm supposed to do what's inside the parentheses. But here's the problem. You can't do what's inside the parentheses because 2x and 5 are not like terms. We cannot combine those together and say that that's 7x. That's not correct. 2x plus 5x would be 7x, but 2x plus 5 is just 2x plus 5. I cannot simplify that anymore. If, you're, if that seems a little weird to you and you're not sure about that, go watch my video on uh, combining like terms, and, and I start with that. So since I can't do what's in the parentheses first, the only way to get rid of these parentheses is to use my distributive property. I have to take 3 times everything in the parentheses here. So I'm going to take 3 times the 2x, and then I'm going to take 3 times 5. 3 times 2x is 6x. Bring down the plus, and 3 times 5 is 15. Now I'm done, because these are not like terms, so I cannot combine them together. I am done. That's all I can do. All right, let's look at another example that would have uh, two distributings in them where we could maybe simplify it a little more at the end. So the directions here are still simplify. Let's look at 5 times x minus 2 plus 3 times 4x plus 1. So now I've got two different sets of distributing that I need to do. I need to do 5 times x and 5 times 2. I only take 5 times the two things that are in the parentheses uh, next to the 5. Now, I'm going to mention this because maybe some of you don't know. If there's a number right up next to a parenthesis, like the 5 is right here next to the parenthesis, that means multiply. Anytime you see, and you may have seen something like this before, like 5 and with a 4, like that. And the 5 is next to the 4 and the 4 is in parentheses. That means times. So that's telling you to do 5 times 4, which is 20. It's the same thing here. So it's 5 times everything that's in the parentheses plus 3 times everything in these parentheses. 3 times just the stuff that's in the parentheses right next to the 3. So let's do that. 5 times x is 5x, and 5 times 2 is 10. So bring down the minus and then 10. Bring down the plus. 3 times 4 is 12x. It's actually 3 times 4x is 12x. Bring down the plus. 3 times 1 is 3. Now I have four terms. I have a 5x minus 10 plus 12x plus 3. Remember your terms are separated by pluses and minuses. So 5x is a term, minus 10 is a term, positive 12x is a term, and positive 3 is a term. I can combine the terms that have the same variables. So I can combine the 5x plus the 12x and I can combine constant terms, those terms that do not have variables, minus 10 and plus 3. I can combine those together. Again, this is on the combining like terms video if you need to review that. 5x plus 12x would be 17x. And then minus 10, which I can think of as a negative 10, plus 3 is a negative 7. So I'm going to write that. I could write it as plus a negative 7. But really, it's a little nicer to just write it as minus 7. Remember, adding a negative 7 is the same as subtracting 7. So if you come up with a negative 7, you can just write minus 7, and that means the same thing. So in that last example we did, we had to distribute and then combine like terms in order to simplify that expression. Now, how about this? Can I write my answer here then would be 10x? Can I combine that to give 10x? No, I cannot. Why not? Don't want to do that because these are not like terms. In order to be able to do that, I would have had to have 17x minus 7x, then that would be 10x. 
but 17x take away 7, the 17x and the 7 are not like terms, so I cannot combine them, so I am done. Okay, let's, let's do an example that's got some negatives in it, because sometimes the negatives can uh, be a little tricky here. I'm going to show you a couple of those. Um, let's say I've got negative 3 times x minus 5. And again, we are simplifying using the distributive property. Since the negative 3 is outside the parentheses, I have to take negative 3 times x and negative 3 times what I want to think of as negative 5. That's going to be the easiest way to do it. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x, and negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. So remember, I know you're thinking this is a subtract 5. Some of you are thinking this is subtract 5, which is true. It is subtract 5. But remember, minus 5 is the same as plus a negative 5. Let me write this out a little differently. Let's say you actually did, um, did this a little differently. And you did this. OK, great. All right, so you did negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Then you brought down your minus. Then you did negative 3 times 5, ignoring the minus because you brought it down. Negative 3 times 5, positive 5. Negative 3 times 5 would be negative 15. So you'd end up with two negatives here, which you would have to make a positive anyway. So what I'm trying to show you is it's just easier to think of this as a negative 5. Another way you could think about it, and I know I'm showing this a lot of different ways, but this is one of the most common mistakes that people make in algebra is, is mistakes with their negatives. So it's important to spend some time thinking about that this minus and how it, how it is the same as a negative and how it can be thought of as a negative. So remember we talked about before how subtracting a positive is the same as adding a negative. In other words, x minus 5 is the same as x plus negative 5. You could do that. You could change a minus, a positive, into a plus, a negative, and it would be the same thing. I know some of you are thinking, what? So let us um, let me come up here and show you a little example. If I do 6 minus 8, that's the same as 6 plus negative 8. Minus a positive 8 is the same as plus a negative 8. 6 minus 8 would be negative 2. 6 plus a negative 8 would be a negative 2. And that's true in general. So as a rule, as a rule, you could say that a minus b is the same as a plus the opposite of b. So if I decide to change, or th uh, change this x minus 5 into plus a negative 5, and then do negative 3 times x and negative 3 times negative 5. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3, I could bring down my plus here that I made. Then negative 3 times negative 5 is a positive 15. So notice I'm ending up with the same thing here. I'm ending up with negative 3x plus 15. In my opinion, this is the easiest way to think about it up here. Negative 3 times a negative 5 is a positive 15. Just think of this minus 5 as a negative 5. These two other examples are just designed to convince you that it is that this minus 5 is the same as thinking of it as a negative 5. Let's do another example with a negative. Sometimes, uh, like an example we did a couple times ago, you could end up with, let's say I had 4x minus 5 times 2x minus 1. Now notice this 4x is not being multiplied by anything. Again, I'm trying to simplify. So the 4x, I'm not going to do anything with that. I'm just going to bring it down. The 5 has to be multiplied by everything in the parentheses. So we're going to take the 5 and times it by what's in the parentheses. Here's the tricky part. Yes, we're going to multiply by 5, but remember, Whatever symbol is right in front of the 5 belongs to it. So this minus belongs to this 5. In other words, we need to think of this as a negative 5. So we're going to distribute negative 5 into the parentheses. Negative 5 times 2x would be negative 10x. So I'm going to write minus 10x. Negative 5 
times a negative 1 is a positive 5, so I'm going to write plus 5. Big thing there is just getting comfortable with the idea that this minus and this negative are sort of interchangeable with each other, and a negative 5 times a negative 1 is a positive 5, and then I need to write plus 5 since it's a positive 5. Now, are there any terms here I can combine? I think so. I got two x terms here. I got a 4x take away a 10x. 4x take away 10x would be negative 6x, and then bring down the plus 5. Can I combine those together? I got two terms. No, I can't because one's an x and one is not an x, so I am done. How about I write one more example up here and you can try it on your own. Maybe pause the video and try it and then start up again and see how you do. Um, let's see. How about 3 times 2x plus 4 minus 2 times 5x plus 6. All right, go ahead, stop the video, give that a try, and start it when you're ready to check. Okay, let's see how you did. So we want to take the 3 times the 2x and the 3 times the 4. So that gives us 6x plus 12. Now here comes the tricky part. I have to take negative 2 times 5x and negative 2 times 6. Negative 2 times 5x is a negative 10x, and negative 2 times a positive 6 is a negative 12. So I want to write that as minus 12. Now we can combine like terms. I have a 6x and a minus 10x. Those can go together. And then I have some constant terms here. I got a positive 12, plus 12, and a minus 12. So for my x's, we have 6x take away 10x, which is negative 4x. And for my constant term, I have a positive 12 take away 12. Well, that's 0. So I, don't, I could write plus 0, but negative 4x plus 0 is just negative 4x. So I really don't need to write it when it's a plus 0. And that is all there is to that. So that's a little introduction to the distributive property. And um, that basically it's a way to help us get rid of parentheses when we cannot simplify what's inside the parentheses.